What's going on, good people? This video will be discussing how to replace an exterior door. Um, I had an exterior door on a house that started to rot out and uh, ultimately I was like, all right, I'm gonna eventually get to it. I'm gonna eventually get to it. I'm eventually to it. And well, one day I actually got to it. So let's get into this video. All right, so what we have here, I have a door that goes to the exterior from the garage area. Um, because I don't use that door, I oftentimes have stuff in front of it. And so what I did though is the, the door definitely needed to be replaced. Um, you could see at the bottom, the screen door, it had a screen door on the exterior but the door itself was starting to rot at the bottom, um, most likely from like water intrusion or something of that nature, maybe before that storm door was put in place, I'm not sure. This is the door that was here when I got the house and the storm door was also here when I got the house as well. Um, one thing about this particular door though is this door is not, although it was used on the exterior, the door is not an exterior rated door. The door is actually a interior rated door. Now, I know you're thinking, well, the door is a door, right? Not necessarily. And so a interior rated door is usually hollow. Now it has the structure on the ends and there may be a structure in the middle, depending on the manufacturer. But for the most part, interior doors are hollow. They don't, uh, you know, they will not withstand a strong kick or, you know, a strong hit to them. Uh, a lot of times you've probably seen it in even in like TV or movies where they kick a door in the middle of the door and the door just blows through. And that's because that door does not have any kind of structure in there. It's often made of less, uh, excuse me, it's often made with like weaker materials. So it might be made with like a quarter inch or maybe even an eighth inch plywood instead of, you know, a steel door or a fiberglass door, which is normally what is used for an exterior door. Um, so that's one thing that I was like, this door has to change. And I wasn't too urgent to try to get it, but you know, with the virus setting in and so forth, um, it's like, Hey, I got this extra money on hand. What can I work on with this extra money? And so this door was one of those things. So here we go. Um, let's go back right quick. So when you're, when you get a door, there are uh, a couple of things you need to take note to. So you need to take note which way the door swings. So, and from which angle does that door swing? So if you're on the inside of the door and it swings left or it swings right. And then if you're on the outside of the door, whether it swings left or it swings right. There's also, there's also the door that opens in or the door that opens out um, because you do have exterior, exterior doors that are hung so that they open out instead of in. Uh, usually those doors are on like a utility closet, such as like a mechanical room where you have your hot water tank and your HVAC systems. Um, this door obviously opens in, as you can see, this is inside of the house and it opens in to the left. And so, um, the another thing you need to know when buying your door is you need to know how wide the door is. Door height is usually pretty standard. Uh, I believe it's just over, uh, I believe it's 80 inches is the standard. Um, but of course, you know, you can have non-standard doors. Uh, and so I went to my local home improvement store. You can probably tell by the shelving what kind of, which store it is. I'm not going to call the name because they don't sponsor this channel. <laughs> But um, so the door that I needed was on the top shelf, <laughs> unfortunately. And so I had to find a guy to help me get the door off the top shelf. And they only had like two of the door that I needed in stock. Um, for my particular situation, the door is actually 32 inches wide. And I bought, these are what is known. If you get the door with the jam already on it, it is known as a pre-hung door. Um, that way, uh, the pre-hung door is usually the easiest door to put in because of the fact you do not have to line up the jam and square up the door with the jam and all the other stuff. You literally stick it in, level it, good to go. Um, so now some people, they prefer to 
do the doors manually instead of buying pre-hung pre -hung doors. They'd rather just buy the door and then do the jam separately. Um, if you have a custom size door, then you may need to do that, but this is not a custom size door. It is a standard size door. So there was no need for that. Um, now, what you may want to consider, uh, because I was using a interior door instead of an exterior door, uh, from well, I was starting with an interior door and then going to an exterior door. What I did was I actually took the trim off the door and I don't have a photo of that, but I took the trim off of the door and then measured the what is known as the rough opening. So that's one jam. Um, let's see. So here is the trim being moved. So the rough opening would be this space here from the end of the drywall on this side all the way to the end of the drywall on the other side behind the door. And so I believe that was a 34 because this interior door measured, if I'm not mistaken, a 33. And they normally don't sell doors in odd number measurements. You may find one, but it's highly unlikely. So normally when you buy the door, uh, you buy it for the rough opening. And so the 34 inch door excuse me the 32 inch door has a rough opening of 34 and an eighth one eighth i believe is the actual measurement um so again interior door versus exterior door the numbers will vary so because I, like i said i measured this interior door and it was just over 33 but the actual exterior door equivalent of this is exactly 32. So keep that in mind when you're doing your measurements that if you have the wrong type of door already in place, you need to measure the actual rough opening instead of the door itself. This is a photo of the existing door and the screen door that's there. And as you can see, this space here in between is very dirty. Um, the jam as well, excuse me, the threshold down here as well, um, obviously has seen better days. And I'm not sure what is going on with the paint here because I don't know if they just moved this from one part to somewhere else or what. Um, from what I was told from uh, one of the neighbors is that this door was not originally here, that this door was added as the garage was used as a living quarters for one of the occupants of the house. And so they kind of made a way for the that occupant to be able to get into the house without actually having to go through like the main front door of the house. Um, I know what you're thinking. Well, they lived in the garage. Why they couldn't just open the garage door? I, from what I could tell, the garage door did not have an opener on it. And the garage door probably was not functional at the time because of, of it. Um, because the garage door that's there uh, was relatively new when I got the house. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. The garage door probably didn't work or was broken. And so they put a human door or man door on the side of the house to allow that occupant to be able to get into their designated living space. All right, here's another opening of it, of that doorway. Um, as you see, I've already removed the existing doorknob off of the door. And the next step is to, um, well, show another photo of what it looked like from the outside before. So again, this is the metal screen door that is there. And so to remove the screen door, the screen door actually had a broken hinge down here at the bottom. And you can kind of see where it's popped out. Um, the plastic, this door had plastic hinges on here. And uh, that plastic at some point prior to me getting the house was broken. Uh, so uh, it, literally this metal, this screen door was only held up by the middle and top hinges. And so to remove the screen door, all you had to do is remove the hinges around the frame here. And there you go, the door is out. And so the next step was to remove the actual door. And so you can see it here is um, obviously a little dirty down here at the bottom because of dirt and so forth over the years, um, but this is the door. And so uh, this is the spacing between the drywall and the door jam. And to believe it or not, the actual rough opening is probably somewhere like here. So we have about another inch and maybe an eighth of space between the stud that this door would, the jam would attach to and where the actual jam is. To be honest, that is a lot of space, um, but you know, it's 1970s construction. So that's kind of not surprising. Um, this here, this piece here is 
rather unusual. I never took note to why this piece was here the way it was. Um, but once I actually started deconstructing and getting this door out, I realized that the door that they did put in place was actually too short for the opening. And so what they did was um, they put this filler piece here that goes all the way across over that uh, gap that was too too wide. Um, so this door was probably cut off at the bottom of the um, at the bottom near the threshold and then put into place or it was borrowed from somewhere else and put into place. Uh, but ultimately the door jam was too short and likewise the door was also too short for this opening. So they had this filler strip here. And so once I remove the filler strip, you can now see the remaining part of the brick mold. And as you see, that is probably about a half inch to three quarter inch gap between the top of the brick mold and the uh, brick ledge here. And this right here is mortar from the brick. Um, so that's nothing of concern there. So um, next up is to get the door out. And so to do that, you just pop the hinges up. Uh, you can take a, usually what I do is take a flathead screwdriver um, or a Phillips head screwdriver or a nail, hit it in on the bottom part. This uh, pin will pop up and then you take that pin and you either pull it up by hand and grab it with your pliers or use a screwdriver and kind of pop it up a little bit further till it comes out. And you do this for each of the hinges. The door jam was not even secured to the, I mean, excuse me, the threshold, which is the piece on the bottom, was not even secured to the door jam. So I was literally able to bump that out of place. I never tried that before, but when I was trying to remove everything, it literally just came out. So, so much for that. All right, next, I have the door out of place. As you see, there's nothing on the hinges here and the threshold is out. So the next part, uh, obviously there's a lot of dust and dirt under there. Um, this right here is actually a uh, poop from something, I'm assuming roaches, maybe even spiders. Uh, you will encounter that sometimes uh, because they sometimes do manage to get around the door jam and uh, especially if it's not caught or properly sealed. So, uh, you know, just don't inhale the stuff. If you see it, sweep it up or whatever the case may be. All right, so I now have the door jam out. Uh, what I did to get the door jam out was to uh, literally break the jam. So I have my reciprocating saw on hand. I'm not sure if I, okay, so here is the door jam. I wasn't sure if I had a photo of it, but this is the door jam. And so what I did, I cut the door jam in half on the sides and that bottom half on both sides allowed me to maneuver the top half and the top of the door jam out of the opening. And so it literally comes out in massive pieces. Ideally, I know you've seen on the home improvement shows where they go in and they start swinging a sledgehammer all over the place. I hate that, to be honest with you. Uh, it's a lot easier and it takes less time if you're able to get the thing out in bigger pieces and you know the home improvement shows i'm not going to call any kind of networks or whatnot but some of those home improvement shows they will take a sledgehammer to any and everything and chop it up into itty bitty pieces and then throw it into a dumpster that takes a lot of work to get those itty bitty pieces into that dumpster as you see here i have those chunks of brick mortar that kind of overflow they broke into itty bitty pieces and uh you literally have to pick up pick them up one by one so that's what i say i personally hate trying to do things with those small pieces cut it into bigger pieces it's, it, it takes less effort to move a bigger piece and by less effort i don't mean picking up effort i mean less trips to your dump your dumpster or your disposal site whatever the case may be if it's in a bigger piece all right, the next thing is to get the new door in. Um, as you see here, I had to do a couple of test fits and this is not all the way in at this point, but I did uh, check the clearance. Uh, for this particular door, the drywall was actually too low for the opening. And so I think this attributed to why that old door was shorter than it should have been is because they, instead of cutting the drywall to where it needed to be, they just cut the bottom of the door off and fit it in. And to be honest, it's easier to cut the drywall and cover it up with trim. It's more appropriate, let me let me restate that, it's more appropriate to cut the drywall and fill it, cover that cut with 
uh, trim than it is to cut the bottom of the door off and the bottom of the jam off to make it fit in the space. So that is another kind of a big oops that I noticed. All right, so once I cut the drywall down, um, as you see here, I have the, uh, the caulk I applied. Um, one thing I will say about this is I should have applied the caulk maybe about here instead of there because once I actually went to put the door in, uh, some of that caulk actually applied, uh, squeezed out from underneath the front of the door to the exterior. And that's not what I want. I really wanted to try to get a whole seal across the bottom. Um, to believe it or not though, this is a full tube of caulk. I know what you're thinking, that is a lot of caulk. And yes, it is, but I wanted to make sure to do my best to make sure that no bugs or uh, anything else that should not be getting in, air drafts, uh, cold air, hot air, whatever the case, could not get in. Water, that's another thing, because uh, the main thing with these is water intrusion. So I put down a whole tube of caulk down here to seal it in. And remember, do this after you do your dry fit to make sure that your door will fit in the space. All right, so once I got the door in the opening, uh, some of the holes on the uh, hinge side of the door were intentionally not filled in, in, in with screws. And if you read the instructions, which I did not when I put this door in, to be honest with you, but if you read the instructions, it will tell you that these non-filled in screw holes are for you to drill a screw in that will reach the stud. Um, it may say nail, but I use the screw, uh, more so a screw that would match uh, these existing screws here so it wasn't as obvious that something else was there. Um, and so what I did is I not only did I fill this in, but then I took one other screw out of the jam side of the hinge and then put another longer screw in that would reach the stud. The reason being is because you want to have the longer screws that reach the stud because that those longer screws or nails are what prevents a door from being kicked in. And so a lot of people won't tell you that, but that is ultimately what keeps the door from being kicked in. Like the door can be attached to the jam, but if that jam is not attached to the structure or the studs behind it, then that door is a very weak point. So uh, I've done this a number of times. I believe these particular screws are either three inch or three and a half inch. Um, you can get, if I'm not mistaken, a four inch screw, which is relatively long for come in screw standards uh, but usually three to three and a half inch will do you justice in when it comes to a door and you do this for each of the hinges that are on said door as well as the latch and if you have it deadbolt all right so i did cut out the drywall and as you see here it wasn't the best of cuts but i did get it done um, i also filled in that extra space um, with a another two by four because the overhead uh, structure for this particular door, the base header of that was probably a right around here. And so to fill some of that space in, I put an, I cut another two by four to the width of the door opening and that brought that space down. I think I probably still had like another maybe inch of space between that added two by four and the top of the door. So I filled that space in with insulation in an effort to block any drafts that may come in. All right, and last but not least, this is the door. I added in a deadbolt and key lock. Um, eventually I will add a screen door to this to further protect the actual door itself. Um, my dad did the caulking around it because I am not great at doing caulk. When I mentioned about doing the caulking around the base of the door, you can kind of see some of that squeezed out down here. But again, it is sealed up all the way across, so it's not a major issue. Um, the caulk that was used on this door is a latex caulk, and literally is just to cover what is the the space between the brick itself and the what is referred to as the brick mold. The brick mold is this piece of wood here that goes between the door jam and the brick itself. And that goes all the way around except at the bottom where you have the threshold. This particular door uh, is a metal door that is insulated. Um, 
some people will say fiberglass doors are better than metal doors. Some people will say metal doors are better than fiberglass. I chose to go with the metal door because the other doors on the house are also metal. Um, and so in an effort to match everything together, I just figured, hey, get a metal door. Um, the, cu the, the sales associate at the store wanted me to get a fiberglass door because he said if something hits it, the fiberglass door will not dent, which is true. But in an effort to match what's already there, because I wasn't planning on replacing all the doors in the house, uh, I went ahead and got a metal door to match everything else. Um, the deadbolt and doorknob came in a lock set. You can buy them as a, uh, a combo pack, if you will. And uh, this particular lock set is the type that allows you to rekey so that you can rekey it to match all the other you know key locks on your house so you have one key for the entire house um so that's what i went with and this is the final part of this door install oh last but not least so i did take the door that was removed as well as the screen door that was removed over to the habitat for humanity store uh which you a lot of times do not see in these home improvement shows is when they take the stuff out of this house uh, it takes stuff out of the house that they're working in they destroy it and it goes into a landfill i am while i do i'm very conscious of like trying to recycle I, I i'm not a heavy recycler or anything of that nature but i do take value in recycling what i can and so by taking these doors out and as you see here i have the hardware that came with the door taped to it and even the hinges on here were taped to it as well. So that, um, you know, when I donate it, whoever gets this door, they have all the hardware that came with it. They can use it to their benefit. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, that door has damage on the bottom of it, as you see here, why would you donate that? That is not my decision to make. Um, a lot of times these doors are, uh, they can still be used, um, just some minor repairs. Like here, you probably just need, uh, you could smooth that out or put a uh, piece of filler on the end of it and it'll still work and look relatively new. Um, throw some paint on it, change the appearance immediately. Um, but the thing is, I, the point I'm trying to make with this is if you have a construction project that you're working on, instead of just destroying it and throwing it all in the trash for it to go into a landfill, consider trying to save what it is and then donated it to the habit in this case the habitat for humanity uh, the benefit in donating these products is that you get to write your donation off when it comes to tax time so you know and then also this product gets to be reused again for somebody else whether it's a habitat for humanity house or somebody else that's looking to fix their own house up and they can you know buy it from habitat for humanity and habitat for humanity takes that donation and use it to build a house or uh you know for somebody else so that wraps things up for this video if you have any questions about this door replacement project or you know more questions about the why i choose to prefer or why i prefer to donate uh old house materials instead of just throwing them out and they wind up in a landfill drop a comment down below uh, if you have learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up that thumbs up helps me know that you are interested in content like this and it also helps other youtubers see the content like this uh, last but not least, please be sure to subscribe. I drop new videos on Saturday and Tuesdays. So click the bell for notifications if you are a very avid YouTuber. And until next time, peace.